Hi right, everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hunt. Welcome back to the Baseball Hut. Hopefully you like this video. We just watched the Met game. Let's play the Marlins. <clears throat> they did not show up tonight. And uh, this is how this team is. You know, I mean, I did a video this morning and uh, talking about very much trying to be positive and trying to, to give you something to look forward to. But then they come home and they just don't show up. They lost three out of four to the Marlins. They, you know, Gary and, and Keith talking about how the, the Marlins have been a thorn in the Mets side for, for 25 years. You know, um, that is their World Series, the Marlins. And the Mets just don't, you know, that's not professional. I would mention. Anyone saying, well, you know, they were jet lagged and bullshit. <clears throat> the Phillies went to play Boston. And the first pitch of that game, Kyle Schwarber crushed the ball into right field and put got them off to a good start. Now, the Mets were leading in this game. But we see all the same problems, all the same issues with this pitching staff. <clears throat> we saw with uh, Tyler McGill, he was pitching okay, and in the fifth inning, he completely fell apart. And Mendoza had no choice but to take him out of the game. Um... I keep saying this. I feel like a broken record. Um, the pitching coach is a disaster. Uh, and you see that with Tyler McGill and David Peterson. They will pitch well, and then they will not, they'll collapse in a game. And this is a recurring uh, pattern with Tyler McGill. He's pitching well. He'll give up his walks. He'll give up his home runs. It's out of nowhere. There's no consistency. And this is a pattern of the Jeremy Hefner pitching staffs giving up walks, giving up home runs. You know, and it's this has been going on for like five years now, since 2020. So, I mean, you know, I don't see anything. I don't see the pitching staff, even with all the talent that they'll bring in, I don't see uh, that changing as long as you have the same pitching coach. And the pitching coach is, is the most important uh, coach that you have on a, on a baseball a coaching staff. Um, offense is just pathetic. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you get four hits against the Mons. The Mons have lost six out of seven games. Um, and Skip Schumacher did everything he could to get this final game. I mean, he brings in his closer in the, in the eighth inning, and the guy got six outs. That's how much they that he wanted that game. And then 20 games on the 500. The Mons are terrible. You know, but this manager knows how to manage the game. And he brought his closer in to get the game. He wanted to get this win for today. Um, and they just squeaked out the win. And, and let's score two runs. Uh, you know, they got the runs early in the game. And then they didn't do anything the rest of the game. I guess in the third inning, they scored two runs. And the rest, the rest of the game, they were dead as a doornail. <clears throat> and I'm not going to blame the jet lag from London, that's a bunch of garbage. Uh, Francisco Lindor, again, had a big at bat in the seventh inning. His stronger side, batting right-handed, popped it up. So this is what we talk about here. We talk about Lindor being underrated. If there was a moment that this team needed a hit, that was it. And I was thinking in the back of my mind, I, I, I think he's going to get a hit. But again, disappointment again from this guy. And that's what I talk about. He can put up all the numbers he wants, but if he doesn't come up in a big spot at home, the Mets record is so bad at home. These guys are scared. And I'll say this. They are scared shitless to, to play in front of their own crowd. Uh, and it's ridiculous. I mean, they're better off playing at home. I mean, they're better off playing on the road. And it's funny. In London, when they were the home team, they, played, they, they lost. When they were the road team, they won. You know, but this is what we get with a bad team, a mediocre team, a team that is soft. They should have been, that was a thrilling end to that game on, on Sunday. They should have came home with a lot of energy and they had nothing. And then in the ninth inning, Adam Adovino comes in the pitch. They gives up the stolen base, you know, and then they, they had the tack on run in the ninth inning, you know. 
And here's the thing, if there was the Mets side of this thing, if they had the, if they win the driven in the run at home. They win the gun the the, the, the the fourth run with a sacrifice fly, which the Marlins did. You know. That's the difference between the teams. And that's the difference between the Mets being a good team and being this. This is just uh spinning your wheels. Uh everybody was waxing poetic about the team and that game on Sunday. I said about a month ago. The Mets are a bad team, a mediocre team will win games like that. But the day to day grind, the day to day winning, it just doesn't doesn't uh it doesn't happen. And then you have these long droughts of not scoring runs, these long droughts of not winning games, uh these long and every game is close. That's a sign of a bad team. If your team can't win a close game, they're not a good team. And it's those close games that that basically prepare you down the line for September and October. And if you can't win those games in April, May, and June, it's one run games, you're gonna you're not gonna be able to win later on in the season. And it's it's always these one run games that determines if your team is a good team or a bad team, or it's gonna be a winning season or a losing season. It happens with every team. And again, like I said, the Phillies didn't have any problems with jet lag. There wasn't an issue in terms of of how they uh performed up in Boston and went four to one. Zach Will, you know, pitched great. And and there you go. You know, got great starting pitching, got off to a fast start, jumped on a, a young team, and they did that tonight. The Mets, they let this team hang around. They didn't like uh they didn't do much during this game. They had a chance in the seventh inning with Lindor. Lindor did nothing. And, and that's what that's what we get all the time. I'm trying to be positive. I did that positive video this morning. It was well received. I know people want the Mets to win. But they, they disappoint us. This group is a disappointment. And it's a failure. This Mets team is a failure. Um, Tyler McGill, I don't know what the problem is. I, I'm not a big fan of the pitching coach, like I said. But he does the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't see an improvement with the pitcher. You know. Uh, you let me know what you think about this video. Obviously, it's very this, this sort of a flat game tonight. No energy. I didn't think there'd be a lot of energy in that ballpark tonight, considering the Mets. Uh, it's a Monday. It's a Tuesday night against the Marlins of all of all teams. And, and in that situation, you're not a good team. Uh, you're going to come up flat against a really bad team and a team that just likes to beat you. And that feels very comfortable playing you. Part of the problem with the Marlins and the Mets, the Marlins play the Mets during spring training. So there's no intimidation factor. All these these young guys play the Mets all the time. That's part of it. And at the same time, there's no pressure on the Marlins. Well, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Baseball Hut. I try to be as positive as I can be. But they, they disappoint us every time. Well, thank you for watching. And I'll see you later.